Kidney stones are also called renal calculi or urolithiasis or nephrolithiasis. When we are talking about kidney stones, we do not actually refer to actual stones forming inside human urinary tract system. But we are talking about a solid material that normally develop with time in the urinary tract of human being that is from the kidneys, ureters and bladder and they may crystallize and cause some symptoms that we are going to look into details in this particular video. If you love this channel, kindly click the red button, return, subscribe, turn the bell on for more videos that we post. Let's do it and stay tuned. Renal calculi or kidney stones are categorized into four different types of stones that we are going to discuss into detail. Number one is calcium based stones and calcium based stones forms about 80% of all stones that are found in this pathology called renal stones and calcium based stones we have calcium oxalate which is uh, normally formed when there is increased levels of calcium in the body of a human being and the kidneys cannot eliminate so they crystallize and we call this hypercalcemia we also have what we call calcium phosphate stones calcium oxalates normally results as a result of a surgery called bypass and also increased intake of calcium based food or calcium supplements that are taken uh, to uh, increase the level of calcium in the body if you take in excess then they may accumulate within a period of time and then the kidneys cannot eliminate them and also this one results because of reduced urine output secondary to dehydration so we are encouraged to take a lot of fluids to prevent dehydration because when there's reduced urine output then there will be hypercalcemia and this one will result into calcium oxalate stone or calcium phosphate stone number two we have what we call uric acid stones uric acid stones normally results when there is a lot of intake of what we call purine purine is a natural chemical that occurs naturally in foods like alcohol uh, red meat organ meat shellfish or even seafoods and when they accumulate within a period of time and there's an overload then the kidneys cannot eliminate and this results into what we call uric acid stones so this results into the ph being lowered and becoming more acidic resulting into what we call hyperuricemia number three we have what we call struvite stones struvite stones struvite stones normally result from bacterial infection bacterial infection majorly urinary tract infection if you have not watched my video about urinary tract infection click the link that appears up here so that you can be well conversant with uh, bacteria causing urinary tract infection now these bacteria normally hydrolyzes urea into ammonia and in this manner crystals normally forms and which we call them struvite kidney stones and the basic candidates that we had talked about the bacteria that are causing this are one Escherichia coli Klebsiella pneumoniae Pseudomonas aeruginosa and group B streptococcus and this normally leads into production of dark urine which is very pathognomic of struvite kidney stones and it normally uh, composed of what we call ammonium magnesium phosphate and it's likely to make the urine more alkaline so struvite stone normally results into this number four we have what we call cysteine stone cysteine stone is a rare disorder it's an inherited autosomal recessive disease which uh, a defective gene is passed from one parent both parents pass this to their unborn children resulting to this called cystinuria which is a cysteine kidney stones other causes of kidney stones as i mentioned earlier is dehydration which we are encouraging people to take a lot of fluids increased blood pressure 
uh, may also contribute to this and it's a risk factor obesity is also a risk factor to this production of kidney stones those who are undergoing weight loss surgery have a high risk of developing kidney stones clinical presentation of uh, kidney stone or renal calculi is very very key to be considered number one is very sharp severe colicky pain that occurs at the side of the back and normally radiates to the groin particularly when the stones are moving and this patient may present with being restless because the stones lodge from one point to the other and even when this patient is passing urine there might be very very difficult in micturation or voiding or passing urine experience by this particular patient and you may notice a uh, dark urine or even blood in urine when infection sets in there might be fever nausea and even vomiting in this particular uh, patient and in female there might also be vaginal vaginal smell due to uh, the stone has lodged into uh, the bladder and now urine is accumulation and this one can also occur in all males so it is very very important to consider this and in our next video we are going to talk about how we can investigate or diagnose kidney stone via laboratory investigation and proper management of kidney stone stay tuned and let me see you in the next video